Yes, indeed. Born it. More than culture is the brand. It's the podcast. Come on, the secret genius. Tyler Chronicles. Remo Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Remo Rod. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie Jordan. Yeah. I'm not Remo Rod, guys. Ain't a little way. Yes, indeed. Oh, Ronnie, you busting down, but it's on you. I believe you've been on Facebook. Hey, man, we, there, got, we got our own historian here in Atlanta, man. This brother right here been around since I first started comedy. He was probably around way before me. But uh, went to Clark, Atlanta. Oh, He's one of the go-to hip-hop historians on IG. I see Karis, one of his bitches, T.I., always on his page. Mm-hmm. The brother was, was one of the Killer first Mike. people I ever seen with their own clothing line. Come on. And uh, okay. he was always on comedians, giving them they giving them free shit, telling them where the shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a lot of my merch hustle from this guy. He was making t-shirts for niggas when they was tall tees. Right, yeah, way <laughs> back then. He seen everybody in, in Atlanta start out doing comedy of the new era that's going on right now. But we got a uh, a friend of the culture in the building. Give it up for New Face. We got New yeah. Face. Yeah. New Face. Thank you for Make having me. Make some noise. Me, me, me. Yes, sir. Detroit's on. Yes, sir. Thank well, we you back to me. back with Detroit, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had Miss Pooh last week, bro. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> three, my sister-in-law, bro. Three. Yes, indeed. Three, one, three, so, how did you become yeah, New yeah. Face? <coughs> she started around 99, actually. Birth of my daughter. Um, needed some clothes and something different because I never liked it being... Being, being from Detroit, you know, we gated down top tens and, and, and fresh, so that just came in me. And then when I came to Atlanta, it was just I wanted to be different. Like, I always hated going somewhere and somebody either had on my shirt or my pants, mm. you know, just that oh, whole feeling. Yeah. So it was just a, a matter of. Ooh, that's that uh, you know, uh, black school competition, boy, the HBCU competition. Yeah. I ain't had to dress none in my white school. White tee <laughs> every day. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so it's really just a matter of that. Yeah, it's that's just determination and trying to be different. So I started doing that, but I was also going up to New York, going to like mm. the uh, this fashion district. And so I seen the same thing, like clothes was, how they was coming down here in Atlanta, what they was paying for them, I was getting them three times less in New York. So I was bringing them. So it came from new, like New York, but new, like black, new and urban. So mm-hmm. it came from that. So it was like new underground fashion, always creating excellence. So I just started, you know what I'm saying, making, doing that without my clothes. But then I seen people was supporting it because it was like Coogees, Icebergs, mm-hmm. Fubu when they first came off. Yeah, everybody Platinum, rocking that, yeah. The suits and, and the and, fake Snoopies. Yeah, all that. Shit. <laughs> Bart Simpson, all that. So I was bringing that up outfit. here, and even yeah, because it was a Coogee hat. <laughs> Yeah, well, we was doing the whole goddamn whop in Atlanta. They yeah. was topping, you know. So I took advantage of it, and I was just out the trunk, mm-hmm. going to New York every time. And then I just wanted to take that same market of the people that supported me selling other people's stuff to see if I can kind of do it myself. Right. So that's where the other new part came in, like the new face, put a new face, because I was going to clothing stores like Goodwill or the thrift shop and buying regular shit and adding to it. So I had trying to add value to it. And then, you know, those tall tees at the time, what was them like three in the hood, three for, three for, three for 10, you know, just oh, in three, the hood. Three, okay, I'm talking right. about my right. foot locker. So, so yeah, then we got Foot locker that was part. banging niggas. Yeah, yeah. so Five we got for 20 that when I worked there. Those were still on my side. So those, were, yeah. those were foot were, action. Yeah, those were, huh? The foot action or foot locker. Foot, foot, foot locker, I worked at foot locker, we had them five for 20. The thick ones, they was five for 40, I thought. That was after me. I oh. left Foot Locker at like, I left Foot Locker like 0203. They was five remember, for 20. Uh, the Pink Tees being big, and there was a Lennox Mall being in that foot action. Mm-hmm. And, and all of them, the whole mannequin, every mannequin had a tall pink tee. And I'm like, damn. You know, those yeah. dips the area. Yeah. yeah, so that was heavy. So it was just a matter of doing that. I transitioned from those clothes and other people's clothes and just added my own slice on it for myself and my daughter. And just doing one on ones, like making sure other people had that feeling too. Because every time I went out, like where you get that from, where you do that, that's that feeling. You know that's a good I'm feeling. So and that that was just like, okay, let me transition and see if that supporter turned into something else. So it just was passion at first. So I went to school for art um, in Mumford. So I graduated senior class president, but I was like, okay, design, commercial design, um, architecture, things like that. So Come on. I just took all that talent and tried to put it in one in Detroit, like hustling always selling something that just right. always kept me motivated like right. i never wanted to not do nothing like i i hated seeing that so that's just where that came from the term yeah. in the building like that business owner since you left school or did uh when did you leave school which because you was a business owner in school when i was because you was the time my clark is oh clark, I remember. yeah i st- started business there i never stopped business in any school like mm-hmm. now that i think about it like in elementary school i was selling um 
I was using the, the iron-on crayon. So basically you would draw on the shirt and then whatever you finish drawing, you put the paper on top of it. I was selling those, the Black Barts and the whole family in Detroit, yeah. Bugs Bunny. Like I was selling that in, in elementary school. God and I transitioned to Sheesh, a right And you was, you was drawing these? Yeah, I was drawing the Bart Simpson. Oh, Ooh, you a beast. Sheesh. I was drawing I Bugs in elementary school. Like, man, like that's Bugs Bunny crazy. Cast. Yeah, that you was the like shit. All. The Looney Tunes so shirts. Doing, I was doing like all that stuff like that. So I did that and then the same thing. I went. I transitioned to it. Now I'll take you back. Remember, Naughty by Nature had these shirts or hats, and it had to be a string on top. Yeah, so yeah. You take a t-shirt, the sleeve, and make the little brim, and then the other one. Then you do this, and you got the little Naughty by Nature thing. So man, I, I ain't know that. Those hats too, <laughs> and, and so I ain't know how he said that, that's how you make it. Like we all knew that shit. Like, I, that. <laughs> I went yeah. to the gas station or the liquor store. <laughs> Let me get the hat <laughs> <strands> on <laughs> Yeah, so. Real talk. Okay. The naughty hats. Damn. So, so speaking of naughty, how did you? Okay. What? Well, let me start here. What would you consider yourself? Because people call you hip hop historian, or 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 what? When it comes to music, what do you consider like, I, yourself? Look outside, looking in. Like I, I just call it like a hoarder. Like, like I just never <laughs> throw shit away. Like when I was, if you don't understand it, like if you don't have value in it, it just like look like a bunch of shit. Right. And sometimes people will come in into my establishment or my home or wherever I'm at, where I display my stuff, and it's like. Dang, like, you know, just taking it back. So I always love that feeling because I, I love that feeling when somebody got something I don't have. Mm -hmm. and so I like I like to create that nostalgia feeling, yep. you know, that throwback or people saying, man, I had this, I, I used to have this. Yep. Like, I learned that very young. Like, that's probably one thing because people used to always say when I went to the army, my mother would throw this out or I went to jail and lost all my shit. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 at a very early age, I started appreciating like old things. And so I never, I always saw a value in that because other people would see that. And so it right. came to a point where like people on my block was going to jail, probably was about to do time and, and they came to me. Like, I know you would take care of it. Wow. I, I, and they was giving me my shit. So like, that's wow. a bulk of my you collection. You a like, time capsule? Niggas, <laughs> niggas, and Period. niggas that be in jail, like know that I still got it and I send them pics like, and that just, that yeah. gives me strength between both of us. Like, and the same thing, people just showing love because they, they see value in it. Like, if you don't see value in it, then it's just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why, you know, just doing that. So I never stopped doing that. What, what was the, damn, that's dope. What that's was the amazing. first uh, cassette you remember buying? Ooh. Buying. Ooh, everybody answer salt. that question, please. Yeah. I need all y'all to answer that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Everybody. The salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Push it. The one where it was it wasn't even Spinderella. It was the three colors. Oh, Remember shit. it was it was blue, yellow, and red. That was the I take? Think salt with a deadly pepper. A salt with I've never oh, even heard of that, y'all. That's the a first salt shit, with right? a deadly that's pepper. Yeah. And and then that's how you can tell with the cassettes is old that they'll be the white ones. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. White, you know, it transitioned to clear and clear. Right, and black. But before, back in the day, I and mean, black, yeah, you know, yeah. The black was Memorex. Right. The white tapes like the instructionals. Yeah. Like how to build a table. How you that's feel how about <laughs> Spinderella sewer salt and pepper. They they kinda like they kinda dis yeah. like they kinda Cut her off from the group, and they making all kind of money, like doing rock the bells and shit like that. I don't, so. I don't respect that because the DJ is who. That's that's really to me the foundation. Like a DJ to me is like a producer. Like without, yeah, together y'all great, but without that, yeah, without that, like even if they weren't Salt and Pepper, without a DJ, right. They are important, so they should always be held with the utmost respect in mind. I wonder why they wouldn't want her to go. What, what's the? What did they? What did they do? I'm they, sorry. They're not. They, they, could, they kicked. They kicked her out of the group. group. They kicked Spinderella out of the group. And Spinderella basically was been popping the whole time. She does radio and all this other stuff. TV. So like she she's hard to silence. Yeah. She been popping, but they kicked her out of the group. And like she don't get none of the royalties from nothing, so she's oh, suing for royalties. Hours, she's suing for her, to the group rights, all that shit. Like, wow. like I guess she wants her piece because yeah. they're yeah, making a lot of money a off of the brand pepper. still. I think you know what I'm saying. Oh shit! Okay, I didn't know that. But I know she was added later, so I don't know how that works. Like, what was her deal in the beginning? Don't it, doesn't that count? Because you, yeah, you, cause you know about a lot of royalties and hip hop. Beginning, it's from the beginning. Oh, she was there from the beginning, and I think that's the. But same don't thing. it matter what your paperwork say? Yeah, of course it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, every time. That's, that's I'm sure all, she has enough for a case if she's doing it right. That is in some in some cases, in most first cases. First tape, Tyler. Uh, shit. First tape that I purchased with my own money was uh. <laughs> this is gonna sound funny being from the West Coast, but 
uh, Liquid Swords by Jizzle. That's what hey. that song called. <laughs> man, listen. That was I got the whole album. That motherfucker was hard. <laughs> you know, my brother is from. Oh, I got you. My brother's from New York. So, um, you know, he had switch. that influence. Yeah, switch more now. Okay, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that was that was. Good. I mean, I've had I had other tapes before that, but that was the first one I had some bread, and then I went spin it. Shit, nah. Uh, early high school if it was nigga ninth grade or something. Yeah, I think it was ninth grade. That was college for me. Yeah, ninth yeah. eighth grade or something like that. Yeah, but that was the first time I spent money. I'm trying to think of the like the first tape I had was a Michael Jackson tape. Uh, it was probably Thriller. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't buy that shit. What you had, Ryan? What was your first one you picked? That was the first thing. You first thing out? I picked out, like the wanted one, was Thriller, yeah, for sure. But the first one I bought was Jizzle. Yeah, bro. DLC, no one could do it better, boy. Okay. That was my favorite. Nobody. Yeah, with the formula on it, mm-hmm. and got them get funky. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, he had the George Threes on the video with the the I flight jacket. Medallion. Yeah, he had the George jacket with the flight shit. I got mm-hmm. that. I bought that jacket off eBay. It's in my closet just for no reason. Right now. Right now. Well, you ain't gonna rock it. I'm, I'm, I'm saving it. <laughs> Talking about for no reason. This nigga know he he know the date he gonna wear that shit already. <laughs> it's gonna be fall, November thirteenth. Right now, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm searching for schools. Like, yeah, yeah. On the bed. Well, wait till second semester. These niggas come back and they ain't got no new shit, and I'm gonna have new shit. <laughs> Shout out. Hey, y'all remember that though? When you used to come back, nigga, niggas, yeah, niggas be out tight. of shit. Nigga semester, nigga be out of shit. Like, yeah, nigga, I'm on your ass this year. It's too tight. Swiss, boy. Oh, you go heavy mm-hmm. first day of school. Oh, you yeah. spread him out. Oh, you spread him. Ah! Spread yeah, I bought that out. tape from Fleet Market USA on Stewart Avenue, and it was a bootleg, of course. But nigga, mm-hmm. that was my favorite oh. shit. See, that shit it. was harder than NWA to me, bro. DLC was harder to me. Yeah. Yeah. And he was from Texas too. That's that's what made me. That's when I found out as an adult, I was like, ah, the Southern yeah. nigga was better. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I have a question too, like. Thinking of like DOC, in your opinion, I was going to ask you in your opinion, who is somebody that's from somewhere but reps this place so well, but they're actually not from there? Uh, sure. My example is is DOC, how he's from Texas. Oh, but you feel like he's West Coast, LA specifically, yeah, like like corrupt, corrupt. Is feel from, like from he's Los Philly. Angeles yeah, specifically. Right. He corrupt, you think West Coast. Carlos Miller. He's okay. from Mississippi. <laughs> right. But what he reps Atlanta. Ain't pretty mm-hmm. good. Ludacris from Chicago. He's from, from Atlanta. Peoria. That's a good one. <laughs> Usher, Jeezy. Yeah. Almost Usher. everyone from Atlanta. I mean, every like, shit, artist, Troy from artist that's. Huh? Pastor, Pastor Troy. Troy, Troy, yeah. Oh, don't, he claims don't it, though. Him, but you still, say that. He gets claimed he, by Atlanta. Pastor Troy from College Park. I thought. <laughs> yeah. He said that? Yeah. Well, I guess he got he kicked his career off in Augusta. They they claim it like that. You know, oh, he was okay. in college. <laughs> Where it counted like well, that. I remember saying Jay. that. What was Jeezy at when he was Lil J? Lil J make, make, make it. Work. Did you have a, you got any Jeezy first I edition? Shop with me. That's when he had braids. The two. That's when he really sounded like Trick Daddy. <laughs> wow. Like that's um. <laughs> I gotta hear that now. That's, that's from that. From that era, it was a two disc. I remember it was a two disc. You don't know Nell Snow? Disc. Do you have all the PSC in the streets mixtapes? <laughs> okay. Actually, yeah. Here we getting all deep. of them actually in the Trap Music Museum. Like, they're like, two them, and they're actually like. Those are yours. Yeah, those are mine. How, how, how much you of your stuff is you in the <laughs> Trap Music Museum? <laughs> right. All, all that shit Museum yours. Your house. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's all shit. All that shit like, yours. I was able to section when they called me, and I got the call just from like people bringing it up and what I do. When I got the call, it was like, okay, we need this type of collection. So, what they have is a representation of everything trap. And so when they when I did that, I, I noticed it wasn't a women. So I like added gangsta boot tape. I added me an X tape. I added Trina tape. But things like that to represent every little era. But it was trap. So that's maybe three percent of my collection. Mm. Like, I collect video Net Nintendo. I still have the Simon Says. Like I still have damn spell like. Jet magazines, like my collection is. is my mama still got hard. Jet magazines, nigga. Step it up. That's hard. Jet magazines. Well, jet my mama got Jet magazines for you to Uh-oh. read. He's going under the table. <laughs> it's going under the table. Okay. <laughs> See, like, like, the stash, like I would do stuff like that. Like, Hold on, trading. Up, is those uh, artist trading TV cards? Raps cards? Yeah. What the fuck? I don't. I didn't even know these existed. Yo, I traded you my vanilla ice for a public enemy. Fuck you, cracker. See? <laughs> the nine-year-old five, five was Freddy card. What is that? Heavy, that? D, and the Heavy boys. D and the boys. Who you got? Come on. Fat Five Freddy. Fat Five Freddy. Real name Fred Brathwaite. Uh, Hold on. <laughs> we got 
EPMD signed by Eric Sherman. Ooh, I won. You gotta get that in plastic. <laughs> he has two different vanilla ice ones. Three. There's another one on the table. <laughs> you turned them in like you know how the bicycle. And the, 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 Yo, that is crazy. Hold on. Do you Not think? Do you think we shit over vanilla ice enough? Do you, does he get his credit? Cause kidding. Hundred dollars if y'all know who this is. Oh shit. I thought it was kid and play till you turned it all the way around. It's two light skinned dudes. Can. I can't Goodness. see that, but shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Super no super lover C and Casanova Rug. I don't know who the fuck yeah, that is. That's why oh, that's why I said that. Oh man. That's when the, I knew the niggas wouldn't go get it. I knew niggas wouldn't go get it. Anybody that had a high top fade and gold chain. Like and it was, was light skin. Fun. Yeah. I had a high top fade and, and I and, and I was living in, in Long Island. You could have been in that group for sure. I was living in Long Island, bro, and Big Daddy <laughs> Kane was that shit. And the slits I, and eyebrows. Bruh, I, I had a flat top. I, I convinced my grandparents to give me a flat top and then I had made a three finger ring ring out of cardboard oh and glitter God. and gold glitter. Oh Ready shit! Dope, baby. Man, hey. oh. I made a three finger ring, niggas. Hey, hey niggas in the dead end was not fucking with me that week. That they way. got a Bill Bill wow. DeVoe card. Jesus Christ! Okay, that's the one. And that that's means it's after new edition. Like, Young black it. teenagers with the white boys in the group. You remember oh, that the yeah. dude from a uh, house party? Yeah. From house party three. Yo, Yo, black. You. What up, black? Say My name's Jamal. Jamal. How sway? How was it white? Man? <laughs> young black teenagers, was young white dude black with teenagers. Yeah. Dang, oh, low nigga. Yeah, that's but amazing. But Vanilla Ice was jamming at one point. We all liked it at one point. And then everybody was hard. started shitting on. Because a black man wrote it, just like everything else. Like, this is oh shit! Else. Wow. I Man, can't see that. Hell yeah. Simon, you did? Pocket Boy, I was Simon. the shit. Pocket Simon. Man, that's the crazy. Year on there, read that year. I was the shit at Simon. 81. Boy. What do you say? 81 is my guess. What's on guess? Po- 81 on Pocket Simon? That's a little hey, early. What's your guess? What's your guess? My guess Pocket is- Simon, because you know the big Simon came out first. Look so I'm thinking buttons. like, you know, with cell phone it's Look at them switches. That was like oh, that was how they tried to keep the business going. You them, know what I mean? That like shit is old as shit. And they probably had nine volt batteries. That's yeah, thing. easily, easily got nine volt. Ooh, that Milton Bradley does look 80s. <laughs> I ain't going 81 though. I'm going 84. 4, 85. Okay, 84, 81. Uh-huh. The year is 1980. Oh. oh dang. We, yeah, we both would have lost, though. No, yeah, you can't sure. be over. Over, yeah. 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 We all, Which I remember. Nigga, that's it. college right there. Drink that's drinking. Yeah. 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 That's smoking me. Like, that's yeah. kind of what I do. Like, just have people. Man. Boy, I was I the shit at card, 2K. I, memory card. And you could play with that separately. Yep. Yeah. I never had that. The first well, that shit feel like it still works. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I Nintendo had this was only with their consoles though. Like, yeah, shit, Nintendo was always good product. Do you remember the first time you played Nintendo, bro? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Christmas. At Christmas Day. House, yeah. Yeah. That's why that's on my heart. Like, yeah. I remember that day vividly. Like that was my I Christmas don't. Day. Change your life. It was a life changing experience, bro. It but Nintendo was. had a lot of moments like that. Like remember track and field was the shit. Track yeah. and field. Track you had the mat or did you do the spoon? I had the yeah. mat. I, bro. I, 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 used to I was do like my this. And scrape my joints. Oh, and then I, had I found the out you could do with the pencil. Yeah, and a penny. Oh, we did we had the mat. I found it out You had the mat? Oh, we live in an apartment though. That You always find out your game tricks from like your bad cousin. Who, who don't got the game? They be like, bring your game. Right, we got a battery. <laughs> Mom be like, who the hell are they doing that? I would have rather not had the mat for track and yeah, field. That shit made it. The mat was whack, bro. bro that just, shit yeah. made it work, bro. It was trying to get you kids had to, to get you had exercise. to jump for hurdles and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, and the shit barely worked. Work. Yeah, yeah, the shit barely worked. Work. Oh, that shit in the glove. Whoever had the glove. The glove, the glove never was worked. Capped. Nintendo that power that glove shit was never worked right. out the box. You know what made you want the glove? That, that movie, The Wiz, The Wizard. Remember that? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The Fred Savage. Right. That shit made you want that leg glove one. Shit, you try to do the uh, Mike Tyson punch yeah, out. Yeah, wow. Whack shit. the death. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, but um, um, Genesis did that too, though, because that was the first joint to talk to you. Oh, First video game to talk to Sega. When that came on, that changed your life. And then you played Joe Montana Sports Talk. And uh, then it was talking back to you the first time, like, what? He drops it, scramble for the ball. When well, you put that Mortal Kombat blood. Mortal code Kombat, in, yeah. ABB. That's what it was? Mortal Come on. Contra. Uh, up, up, down, down. Up, down. Come on, up, man. Up, down, right, some shit. That's how you fuck. That's what yeah, I figured it out. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA select. Start! Yeah. <laughs> Bang in the butt. <laughs> Fang in the booty hole. <laughs> what else you got, bro? 
Don't stop now, owners. Yeah, so we gonna you go are the hood. nostalgia man. We we'll go hood movies, man. Hood movies. Because I see pull your VHS before you do it. Favorite hood movies before you before you pull it out. Favorite hood movies. Favorite hood. Well, well, first of all, let's define a hood movie. Let's talk about what your favorite hood movie. All right, hood movie would be. Um, it's coming to uh, America. Uh, hood movie. Just a movie, a movie that, that is about uh, maybe the struggle and living in uh, an area that is not affluent and probably being a minority. I'm gonna get you sucker. Politically correct. Oh, oh man, my I'm gonna favorite. Get you sucker. I'm gonna go a little. I don't. Crooklyn. 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 Great movie. I could watch Crooklyn every day. Mm, Menace I'm, for me, obviously. For obvious reasons. Menace. Menace. Hell yeah. I didn't get to see Menace till later. My mom was like, oh. he's an adult. You saw that. Edit. Even though it. Boys in the Hood. <laughs> you you said Mickey Picky? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I saw it at a sleepover. I had to sneak and sit, but it was oh. about three years later. But oh, okay. Remember, it took a year to come on VHS. That's Old dog scared the shit out of me, bro. Uh, he was my scared. Mom was like, she used oh, to go yeah, see the, was movies, a, the R-rated movie. That nigga was a, a, a villain, bro. Yeah. When you were, if you were young watching that movie, you like, man, this nigga is scary. Like people. Yeah, I didn't see, like I didn't see Menace until I was a little bit older too. Mm-hmm. I, I saw Boys in the, the Hood when it first. Came. I saw yeah. Boys in the Hood in the theater yeah. with my whole family. Description of what a hood movie is. I'm thinking that I might have to change it. Like, was Purple Rain a hood movie? Yeah. Right. Shit that you yeah, watch he, every he, day. Everything you they said. minority. Right, that's that. Five Heartbeats is a hood movie to me. Yeah. Five Heartbeats yeah, is my by favorite his, movie. But like, your description time. opens up a lot of shit to be hood movies. Your well, definition. Uh, I tried to black not, cast. Yeah. Because do it go hood from black? Like, it's minority. Like man is not a hood movie. But it's nah. a, what? Black. I don't call it. I wouldn't call it thing like a man a hood movie. Because like in college, that was a like. Best man. Like you could kick it with a bunch of girls. I don't think that. I don't think I'll put that on my hood movie list, bro. Love and basketball hood. No, nah, they was rich. They had paper. Yeah, paper. they were fluent. Nigga, so daddy not, played. Three me, Strikes yeah. is the hood movie. That's Three a, Strikes is the hood. That shit is. <laughs> that's that's an movie. underrated movie. And that's a top five underrated hood so movie. The ones that I brought out today. Were Choices! Nigga, shut your motherfucking mouth. Choices. Wow. I'm sorry, I done Big yelled up. all in the mic and fucked up the top. Ooh, so we got yeah, Menace. See, the special <laughs> thing with these is that's autographed by Project Pat. Oh, he got Menace. That's, he got, I'm about it. I'm nigga. about it. And then Old Dog. Wow. You said, what? Yeah, Who did what? Time old dog signed that? Yeah. Come on, man. That. So have you seen the? I'm. Oh, uh, no, I got the hook up too. Yeah, Tyrone Turner signed that, then. Yep. Man, oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Choices. Come on, face. Let me see. Yeah, and look how like like still remember back okay. in the day your blockbuster your tapes had to be rewound. Yeah, so that thing rewound. Still got it rewound. Ready I'm to play. about it. Ready to go. <laughs> you got. You still got a VCR. I still got it. Of course you do. Of course. Of course. That. And of course. Of you course. Know how many like drug dealers lost tape decks in a rain? What? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you finna sleep just, over your cousin's house? And that's y'all a bump of my uh, collection too. What? Back in the day, tapes used to be. Remember Columbia House? Right. They had it. 12 cassette tapes for a penny. Yep. And you just wow. gave them an address and you gave them shipping in half. Oh, man, I, I owe them so tape. much money, bro. So Columbia much. House. Y'all used to do that, that shit at Columbia fir- House? That was my first creditor. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you still got them on your <laughs> list? Huh? They still on your <laughs> nah, credit history? No more. <laughs> That'd be crazy if a nigga had Columbia Records is like holding them back from having a good score. <laughs> I don't know who to pay. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you owe us 13 cents. <laughs> <laughs> they used to be talking about the Where do I send? This <laughs> yeah, exactly. so wow, have, man, that's that's, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, that's let's put so. Have you there. seen um, I got the hook up to? No, nah, not that not you sure. didn't, didn't go to the, to the premiere. Too. I've seen a bunch oh. of talk and I've seen two sides of that lately. Like, shout out DC Young Fly, first and foremost. That. Yeah, shout out that's to the, whole, the 75 like movies in one year. Like, yeah, you know what, though, you know, when you talk about movies like that, for instance, like The Trap had bad reviews, but it pushed that shit to like uh, yeah. Netflix, um, you know. Uh, exclusive shit. Um, where were you at when you saw Kane to get this sign? Buford Highway. Oh, man. Club. They actually played it. It was an anniversary. Oh, um, shit. It was an anniversary for us. So they were actually playing it on the screens. And I and while we were watching it, and they did the little music break, I met up. You know what I'm saying? And when I see, when I pull up with stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, it. it same of course thing. like instant connection like <laughs> and that's just like my way of like saying thank you too that i i respected what you did in it so much that's dope and that's really my only point at the end of the day like yeah. just me saying thank you because i've probably 
watch that how many hours you know what i'm saying if you were to add how many times, times you invested in something like that i've seen this you 700 know. times <laughs> yeah like even with your your expression when you saw choices like there's a memory it took you right back right. to like the first time you seen right. that i think i learned how to tie a do-rag while that was out yeah. <laughs> the proper way without getting my lines because i used to have it inside out yeah anyway so you know <laughs> take it back oh, like, hair days anybody remember Ooh, like double dribble wow yeah. i got yeah. a nintendo right now i will take that come on man Sign yours it works <laughs> even the retro cover she know about the cover oh, yeah that's man. that's when you took care of your things nintendo. come on man you just hey, took the care man of with the plan trey trey ham in the building way trey just walked in. Yo, hey, bro. Double look at the shit that this guy has on the table. Bro. Come on, man. He's got a cartridge. Man. Look, they got a white man jump. I just know they got a white man jumping over all the niggas all here. Of them, right? I don't like this double dribble. It wouldn't. I work was in, not woke in 2019. I was not, not woke. Doesn't say that. It's still yeah. some spit in here. I know you use it. <laughs> See? Hilarious. That's the one thing you always remember things like that, man. Man, yeah, wow, so double old. dribble. Um, Arches. Then I'll go to the like um, magazines. Like uh -oh. I was okay. always at the Kroger's or the play Barnes and Nobles reading hip hop because I like to you know journalism. So yeah. same thing. I, I pull this out. Do you remember by what? That sign that? I don't even you know that group, right? You know what I'm oh, Vibe so magazine, bro. Yeah. That was back when McDonald's had chicken selects. Hey, <laughs> the special yo. chicken. This, this came from the vault chicken. Yeah, like, that was when it was yeah, green. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you gotta tell us a story about when you got that sign. Big boy at Best Buy in Glenwood. Boomerverse came out. Mm. And funny Boomerverse story. Boomerverse went hard. Very Boomer underrated very album. Underrated, that right? shit was hard. Big boy, he very never, underrated. Never fucking gets his credit. Doesn't get his respect. Not, Only not because on he's side. standing. I don't, don't, I don't no, I'm just saying. Just as a as a in general, just yeah, he doesn't in make general. it. In general, and it's only because he's standing next to number one, one of the greatest yeah. ever. It's tough. Man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it makes it's like Scottie Pippen is terrific, but he holds his own, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they almost made the finals. But you never say Scottie Pippen. They almost awesome. made. They almost Scottie made Pippen the finals. Average triple double his whole life, right? <laughs> and that, then you never say him first. Six nine guard and point guard. Come on, regularly. man. Come on, man. <laughs> nigga was one of the best. Mm -hmm. turn yeah, you about to put the nigga to work for me. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to uh, make you tell jokes. Uh, I went deep in your Instagram and saw your shoe collection. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This nigga ain't trying to do nothing. I got this one right here. <laughs> okay. So we take it's Keep It In The South. In a magazine wow. that's not even not first of all like Scratch magazine, magazine. Right magazine. Yeah, so who's on the cover? That was Juvie. Shit, fresh and Juvie. Manny so fresh and Juvie. Uh, story, you know, who's si story. who signed it? Juvie. Juvenile and Manny Fresh. Okay. Okay. Both together it. at um across the street from Apache Cafe. There was supposed to be a an event, and all of them was supposed to perform. The quad. It was mystical. Manny Fresh, Juvenile. And they some some reason they didn't perform, but I was just in the back as the artists were waiting to yeah. like maybe I don't know with a bag I don't know, but I'm like I know the show That's didn't happen, yeah. but it, in my eyes a show did happen because I was able to interact with them on a level like because yeah. they didn't know whatever, but they didn't end up performing, but I had a great time. Right. Like, Hell yeah, you got like meet chatting them. with all of them and, and just seeing that That's communication and how they, how they was so about to This one Manny show. Fresh was at his most lesbian too. <laughs> <laughs> his most Peak. lesbian. So how did That's... you get ready for an event? Is it like, all right, uh, MC Hammer coming to the Velvet Room? Then I go to MC uh, Hammer's yeah. coming to the Velvet Room. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't get to say my goddamn oh, uh, yeah. uh, you were cassette tapes. Oh, I don't remember which one it was, but it was either <laughs> uh, Bobby Brown, don't be cruel, Ooh. or MC Hammer, Hammer don't hurt him. It was Hammer don't hurt him. Those were My the first two tapes one. I had. Was your first That's what you tape. purchased with your own money. That was a little bit of come on cake right there. <laughs> come on cake. Come on cake. <laughs> yeah. Get your mind together. Ron Rose the first tape. I sold Kool-Aid in elementary school. Okay. So move on. Ooh, Ron Rose the gangster. Oh. Damn, bro. That's how you doing it? Spice first. Come on, about with peace to my purchase? nine on it? With peace to my nine or later spice one? Debut spice one with the yellow tape? He don't want to give away his age for uh, the latest see? friends. <laughs> don't do that, man. Spice one is enough for you. Yeah. Spice, one, spice one, let it know. Yeah, that nigga old. <laughs> he, he fuck with Spice one. Soft, girl, nice one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He in the pocket. Runway, what's your first first tape you ever bought yourself as a kid? Uh, back 
Mm, just pop. Yeah, solid. Ooh, solid purchase. You bought Machiavelli on cassette. Mm. Right. Yeah, solid purchase. That's, that was, was, was that your... They had a walkman there, man. Yeah, yeah, remember when niggas was waiting up? Like, I, nigga, if I could afford a CD. Oh, yeah, the CD. If I had a CD player, that shit was. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I just, you needed the player first before you started thinking about the CD. Well, you, yeah, you, oh. tape, <laughs> you was safe with tapes for a couple years. Yeah, I still had a tape player in my car when I got to college, so I still had yeah. tapes, nigga. Big pun. I used to run that shit hard. Yeah. Oh, I 100%. Would, what? Me and my friends ran 100%. Nigga, I know that shit top to bottom. Me and my friends ran 100% in the ground. Man, bro. that nigga was the best. What else you got, bro? Oh, uh, what else we got? So we'll keep oh. in the South, J Prince. Okay. South. Like, what? that's a historic cover. Don't no mess with that's the time he got all the Houston artists all on the Who cover at one this? time. That was just J Prince. That's all yeah. you would shit. But that's all you really need. Like, and I, like, things like that have become a mission, like Pokemon. Like, now, how where, many people I can get to sign yeah. a cover? Like, <laughs> how, that? Where, like did I was, you get I that did signed this. at a book signing, or did you just this randomly at, walk up on J Prince? Because that seems dangerous. I've done that at Tree Sound. When his book came out, they okay. had been at Tree Sound Studio, okay. so he he read the so, book. So now, do people just find you with stuff when stuff coming to town? Do they invite you like press or lately? Is it lately? Lately, yeah. Are you gonna start your own like platform, like boss up or something? Because like I feel like everybody goes to your page for this stuff anyway, like mm-hmm. the rappers do. Yeah, for the future is that you know what I'm saying I got a movement coming up soon that that's where, where people have started donating to the cause too because mm-hmm. I plan to open a um, nostalgia. It's a call the culture center where it's going to be embody all things culture magazines from clothing like i brought like i said like i did it all like i collected so i have a fubu with atlanta like oh what like, bro like fubu oh, like shit like so it's not just hold on, hold on, one i like, remember that it was a big deal bro. those were they, they, I remember they was hard to find too. Like, in his videos. i remember that shit yeah. Yeah. but yeah, that was like the brave colorway that was a hard right that was a hard, that was impossible to find like you fubu platinum like, oh, bro, bro. you had a Fubu Platinum yeah. shirt? This this be on stage first oh, year doing man. comedy. This is what it is. Hold on, bro. If that I had a big butter show. Oh, show, like, man. You remember, because this was like Chicken Select and McDonald's. Yeah, it no. was a little bit extra than it regular was like It was like $100 for a yeah. shirt. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Platinum, still in, like you said, like Platinum Fubu, still in good condition. But yeah. in this one right here, like... Clothing stuff that's still not around. Like outcast, yeah, clothes, bro. I had some outcast wow. sweats, nigga. I wore them shits every day. Damn, bro. That's, that's like, something. You gotta think too. Like you see, I'm a little nigga. Like I was wearing this. <laughs> I was about to say, man, like, that shit look like it's too like, big for me size, right now. You know he was looking like like Mike. <laughs> what size is that? <laughs> this size, ironically, it's two X. Hilarious. Two X. If you watch my wife and kids, Junior is wearing outcast clothing a lot. Wow. <laughs> See, yeah. So we got we got everything, bro. But you was around like back in, Here the, day we go. in the comedy club. Now too, we special. You got that signed by Janet Jackson. Wow. Special. Story. What's elevator one hundred and seven. You got any King magazine? You got that signed in the oh, elevator. I got the whole. Yeah, I got a whole box full of those. You know, shout out to Daytuan and Adele Henderson. They're my guys from King Janet, magazine, boy. man. That's that's a collection right there. Hold on. So signed you saw Janet in the elevator? It was like, boom! I have this. Doing her last um uh the tour, man. So she was doing a radio run for the tour. Uh-huh. And I caught her because same thing. People know I have in the collection, and, and they'll let me know who's coming because they, mm. you know, like it's like what work to me. Like right. that's cool. Like that's a passion. And they, just to see them pull up, and they, you know, they trying to check me, see if I'm on my shit. Then I pull up. Then the artists pull up, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. that's dope. That's love. Like, cause I had two covers. See, this was a choice. I had the one. Remember, she had top off. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So I, I had a choice. Like, but how you gonna come with it? Ooh. You ain't wanna. Yeah. You ain't wanna be too. Oh, what made, about the dude who just started doing that? He's like, he only got a titty with like shit. Oh, yeah, she, she may not sign it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yo, so what's what's your holy grail autograph that you that you're trying to chase down? You haven't been able to Tupac. get yet. Well, um, <laughs> so when I was in uh, Art Basel in Miami, they had a whole convention. Swiss Beats had the No Commission uh, art show, and so. I knew DMX was going to be there. Right. That was one of the performers. And Jonathan Mannion, who had a photography, mm-hmm. uh, who shot the cover, was going to be there. So I brought that cover. Like, I brought maybe three things because Pusha T was supposed to come. So I brought that cover. And I went to one art show and I had seen Jonathan Mannion. So I pulled out the DMX and he, he autographed that. that Did he do all the Jay Z covers too? Like the blueprint, first uh, Yeah, the recently down. DJ Khaled's, but the Blueprint, the DMX, like all those iconic covers, even pictures of like Aaliyah. 
And so then I cross the street and then I see Swiss at the art show. Same thing, I pull it out, boom. I'm like, you know, that's one in one. All I need was DMX. And like literally after walking out there, I walked outside, DMX was walking in. And so in my head, that was what I wanted to do. Like all three of them. Mm-hmm. Seen them, boom, boom, boom. Now I don't do autographs, dog. And so that's like one still. Like even right. the last time you came to Atlanta, I still brought it. But it wasn't Man. the time. Like I, I always find this time to do it too. Like I don't never like run up because yeah. I check people's temperature. Like some right. people like ain't really with it. You know, what I'm yeah. sometimes might not even. I mean, I mean, be knowing that I'm showing respect, but they not in that moment. Put it uh. Put a, you gotta catch him while he's in there. Put a blood in it next time. Put a, uh, <laughs> put a little bit of well, this ass. one's a, um, a one, girl in there. a oh, special man. one that that I'm building that's real special to me, like that one. Like, oh wow! Like how you said, like chasing something down, like right. but it's really not even a chase. But Dick Gregory, like his, I came always come to his show uptown. Anytime he came to Atlanta, I always come. And like the the last show that he literally performed to Atlanta, he was there and did a book signing outside. And I so he was the one that signed this. I took a flick with him. Him and David Banner was there. But this is something like that. I, people that I wanted to sign it that I attributed or that are in his vein, like everybody's the children of somebody or. Influence. Fluent. So I got like Bun B, that's Big Crit. I got Charlemagne the God, um, Killer Mike. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Shit, Charlemagne. Like just yeah, people. Keep that one more. Uh, so how do you? How do you preserve, uh, nigga? Yeah, his shit just. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, Malcolm just... X day. Yo, I was. I had it because I was gonna see somebody else. Fucking yeah. rained under the bridge. Oh. And it was in the bag. Damn it. And then this is real. This it looks even look old, but like this is really recent. Like it was the last time yeah. he performed. But that's something that that I just try to get make it better. Right. You know, and even influence because it always makes me go back to it, and I always open it up and read it again so that's yeah. that's motivates me too how do women take it Absolutely. when you go to when they come to your house is it like stuff everywhere or they like is it like a museum do they like yo it's neat like I remember it's, when this happened yeah like that's I'm sure to get you in there that's it. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga got a real easy bake up in that work. <laughs> yeah. Easy bake. Yeah, they take to it you well. You know what I'm saying? Food. That's the thing, too, because <laughs> at my home, that's the goal to get it out the house, too, because like I play tour guide at the house sometimes. Yeah. So while it's good, it has its moments where I'm like, you know, I ain't I ain't doing that. I'm in kid. I'm in daddy, day, daughter mode. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. I'm in school Your mode. daughters know that they can't like drink Kool-Aid around the, the tourist magazines and oh, stuff like that? Yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I leave something. Oh, Ronnie Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. Wreck it. Yeah, he's in Boris. Yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, a couple things like tapes. A couple special tapes. We take it back. Scarface. Ooh. One of the most important uh, albums of his career. Ooh. Signed autographs. Wow, the diary, bro. Nice. The nice tape. Signed. Nice where'd, you, where'd you get this one signed? Gold Room. Right oh. after he did A3C, he asked how many people he did, how many people had this, because this came out on cassette. Mm. I raised my hand. Yeah. He cried, yo, that's what's up. Then probably fast forward to after party, we go to Gold Room with um, Lil C's and Biggie Small's son and Combat Jack, RIP. Yeah. Um, we all went in there and Nas was walking in. And, and then security, you know, sometimes they'd be like, eh. but when the artist, he's like, oh no, that's my man's, he remembered me. And yeah. he's like, no, I, we good. Like, so he wow. pulled that out, you know what I'm saying? So that's where that happened at the, the party, yeah. Bro, you, man. You need a show, man. <laughs> hey, somebody should hey, follow you with a camera show, for all like, this shit. Bro, this nigga is, this, this shit seemed like <laughs> the hard lock knife. <laughs> uh, this is bro. What, what you said, like how, how much the Trap Museum has a part of my stuff, like that's like literally 3%. Like I can go any way, like clothing, you know, any of that, glasses, hats. You like you a know. nice paparazzi. <laughs> That's Southern Playlist. Southern Playlist. Players ball right. single. One of my favorite things that I value a lot too is this one, Nipsey Hustle. Yeah. Wow. South to Cab Mall. Wow. Sign Hold on, this. that's Crenshaw? Yeah, no, this is Victory Lap. Vic, oh, the okay, red okay. Tape. I was about to say, yeah. Like the fact that he <laughs> even tape? went to, yeah, exactly. Wow. wow. And signed it. And he signed it like he was going to like not sign it, but I pulled out the Scarface, I pulled out the Nas, I pulled out the um, the Ghostface, I pulled out the Project mm. Pat, so he, he saw 
I think he saw what vein I was on and I came with the utmost respect. And he literally like took the time and chatted with my daughters, like paused the whole line at the mall. You know what I'm saying? Like just, oh, he good. Like the video, he said, yo, let me get my mans. You know what I'm saying? So that moment alone, like every time I seen him again in Atlanta, like, that's one thing that blew my mind when he like recognized me. I remember being at uh, an opera and I took a selfie with my man Kerosene and I looked at it later, weeks later, like and Nipsey like this in the back and he was like, you don't remember, you don't even remember me. Like and that blew my mind because like, damn, you don't expect that from them that side, right? Because like, you always hear, I always hear like, don't ever say you remember me from you know, or mm-hmm. I follow, oh I left that comment like when you're in the street, you really don't, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, you know, I, I went to school with you and you in your mind like, you know, but right. when you really when they kind of connect and know I come with the utmost respect, same thing with Master P. Purple tape, like literally, it's called the Ray purple Kwan. tape. So I got the purple tape. I ate lunch with Raekwon before, just just to get Ray in. Kwan. On yeah, I, I met Raekwon in the barbershop in Smyrna one time. Nice. Yeah, he stayed. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he lived there. To, yeah, he lived there too. Um, Can I get that blood from me? <laughs> <laughs> don't pass. He just put down. Just I'm not understanding what that's about. Red man. Red yeah. Man. That's how I used to look when I didn't have a beard. Chains, <laughs> sign up. Two chains. And another one, throwback to go with, like how you said, the um, the MTV Raps card. I got Eric Sermon. Wow. Ooh. Like, And he signed this at his birthday party at, um, what's the one? Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yeah. Dope. Damn, so you catch everybody to come through Atlanta. That just shows yeah, you that everybody comes party. here. Exactly. Everybody it's comes just... here. Come on, Atlanta Hawks. You should be able to get a free agent, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, for real. Man. God damn, everybody's here. Hey, Can we get somebody to block for Ryan? Jesus, guys. <laughs> Yo, so all these autographs. And these are, are like autographs. You got in Atlanta. These, most of these, are, all this is autograph merchandise. Right. You were saying you got them mostly done in Atlanta? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, everything. Like the earliest autograph I got back in my city was Fresh Kid Ice from Two Live Crew. Fresh Kid So, yeah, Ice. what's the first autograph that you got? The Fresh, oldest one? Probably That's the- Fresh Kid Ice. Yeah. Yeah, in Detroit. Like, what was he doing was, in Detroit? Uh, in, sto- in store. Oh, signing. Like signing for his day. Like really back in the day, like even when I came to Atlanta, they really had a Tower of Records. Like when the album came out, right. you go to Tower of Records at yeah. 12 o'clock. I right. did that for Outkast. I did that for Jane, the main Dupree's album. Where it was at Lennox. Line out here and literally buy it, purchase it, unwrap it, wait in line for them to sign it. You know, Man. but now it's like streaming. So it's, it's the definitely. the art of the autograph going, bro. Yeah. But I'm trying to preserve it, like like just doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to preserve it. Get a picture of the autograph. Because now it's the selfie. Now it's that. But Mm -hmm. I'm like once again how I said with closing, I don't like to be like nobody else. So I don't want I don't want the selfie. But all I want is This brings a different reaction. Yeah. A million people have a picture with Nipsey Hustle. Millions. Mm -hmm. But I can only imagine you're the only one with this. I did not know that that was an option. Yeah. I did not know that that was available on cassette tape. Yeah, yeah. but that he was doing that like as a promo thing for the for the, for the run. run, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For the run. But if you notice, a lot of people are. Nick Grant, Pusha yeah. T, uh, yeah, Big it's... Crits, they all released uh, cassette tapes. The last Big Boy album, cassette tapes, because there's still value in it. Yeah. It's, it's hard to kind of find exactly where, but there is value in well, it. Well, if you got it's a some... hardcore fan base, you got somebody yeah. that want to keep that and make it... Yeah. Do your daughters collect it's anything? Yeah. Books. They collect books. Like totally different. Like books, shoes kind of influence them, but they read a lot. Seashells. Like, but I never kind of they never see me collect. They've seen it grow. You know what I'm saying? They seen it grow and they seen probably the respect because like how you asked, like, did they ever mess up anything? No, I think they seen it was neatly put on the shelf and like, you know, and I trained them for that. Period. Like, cause when, even when you go outside to Six Flag, like, don't touch things. So I didn't even have to say that outside. They learned that in the home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just finding value in this. But they, that's really what the goal is to show them too: is find value in something and take care of it, and then it take care of you. Like these, this has got me in places like how you say a selfie couldn't. Yeah, for sure. Like they don't remember. I signed that, mm-hmm. you know, like I've literally been in a line and they, an artist was like, why are you in line? Like, damn, they remember me from that moment, like that alone. And that's why I say it's like priceless, like, and, and just finding the value. And that's the value that I find in it. The you new know? face card. You see me. Let me go. How do you feel about artists doing stuff strictly Dude. for the clout movement? Like, 
I know it's a word everybody using crazy. Excuse me. Well, speaking of speaking of vintage yeah. shit. <laughs> speaking of vintage stuff, look at the jacket Remo has on. Extra Smallville. American. We're gonna get Will Packer to sign that jacket. Sleeve. <laughs> vintage. Mm. Look at all this shit, bro. Minister yeah, Society Tate brought some shit you, you out. Man. In here, what's up? Dreamcast. Are you gonna leave that? Is that for us, Narvar? <laughs> uh, uh, it's for us to take in. Nah, nah, nah. That shit dope, right? We gonna do the new face show where he chase everybody down and give them their uh, baby baby clothes. Yeah, give them their baby clothes. Yeah. You remember this shoe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, fell out of the fuck. <laughs> they got niggas' baby teeth. <laughs> I literally have that like my children's teeth. Oh, okay. I thought you were about to say like a rapper. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh no! Like the first yeah. spoon. So what? We, we I know you said this is a prized possession. Before you move on with the other joints, mm -hmm. what? What's your most prized possession? You would say? No, um, this Afeni Shakur. Oh, you bought it with you? Okay. Uh, yeah. Probably Afeni Shakur. Talk about when she, you got that one signed. My daughters were at the uh, Tupac Kids Camp. I have two daughters, or four daughters total, but we went to a kids camp. It was a summer camp called Pox Kids. And so they wow. would go there during the summertime. In, in Atlanta? Stone Mountain on Memorial Drive. In Georgia? Wow. Yeah. And they used to have an anniversary for Pac's birthday. They used to have concerts and everything. I went to one of them. Yeah, Mike Epps, uh, Erica Badu maybe hosted it. Yeah. I went to one of the rich kids before when we young drove. Oh. Yeah, that was outside. Yeah, yeah okay. Great Street was hosted. Yeah, that's dope. So meeting her there, but this was actually at the screening. So we built a relationship through that. So, but when at the movie screening, she signed that, but she was the one teaching the children the poetry, or it was from her, she was like the leader of the school. So what she wanted to teach to the kids, whether poetry, dance, and everything like that, my children were a part of. And they, at the end of the summer, they would do a show. So that relationship, just sitting back chatting with her was priceless alone. But then when she signed that, but she signed my daughter's name. Like usually they'll sign new face and I don't even know how they even know who I am. That's the other thing too. But when she signed my daughter's name. Oh, so you don't be saying it because I see Tyrone did a new face, he did N E W yeah, face, but so he must just and knew. Sometimes I get that. That's a good yeah. point too. Like new, new, and then I just try to figure out, right. you know, whatever you sign, because same thing. Right. If you know, you know. Before I pass this blunt, I see a Jay Z album booklet. So this CD is something. Booklet. This is the uh, black album and different approach. Probably my goal, yeah, is to meet a Jay Z. I've met him and I got a book decoded, signed by him, but mm. it was sent to me. Right. So, but maybe I may not get that. But I respect, like I said, DJs. I respect producers. So what I have on here is the engineer, Young Guru. Guru. He signed this. Then we got Knife Wonder. Knife, uh, North Carolina. The, the okay. one joint he had on there, and then Just Blaze. That was the one okay. that put him in the mix, though. So, That's hard. like, I'm probably, I don't know if Bink did one on here, but I'm missing a couple Oh, we can get you a pieces. Bink one. See, <laughs> we can tell him, Ronnie. We can plug so, you in. Oh, he already know. You know Kanye about? West. I got Kanye West when he was on the Time magazine. Mm. Like, the first one, I think he had the Sherlin Coke. So that's where'd you, you where'd know. you, how do you, how did that uh, go down? Where'd you get him to sign that at? A phone store. Like, it'd be in the oddest places, but I go to <laughs> where, like, I figure ain't nobody gonna go. It's not too many people you know gonna be saying? around, yeah. Yeah, and so you have that moment of them interacting because if ain't nothing popping, if I pull out the magazine, you yeah. shot up there and sign it, drew the little teddy bear on it and shit like that. So is your so, calendar not just like full of uh, Atlanta events, like musical, right. like music stuff? One thing I don't, I don't plan. I, I kind of don't, work. I really go off energy. Like mm -hmm. like I may wild out and do shit with my kids and, and might miss an event, no, you know of course. what I'm saying? But, it's every time I'm at somewhere, it's where I was supposed to be. And that's been going on for a good That's six a bar. Years. Like, that's, that's been going every on. Every time I was at somewhere, it's where I was supposed to be. Yeah, like, it's destined. So I follow that. Like, the universe ain't never let me down. Like, mm -hmm. I never went away from somewhere like, fuck. Like, even if somebody, like, I've been in a situation because Central Station, the 559, like, literal fights. But they always ended up with, like, shit, okay. That was a good night. Right. You know, it could have right, been right. worse. You know what I'm saying? God, What's your God, connection to comedy, bro? Because, like, I always, I remember you from being in the comedy mm -hmm. club, always around, like, I don't know exactly where you, you popped up, but, like, my whole career, I remember seeing you somewhere in and around original. comedy all the time. Like, the I, original I've never one. not seen you at a comedy show. Working at, um, I was working at a movie theater, probably the first one that was in um, Atlanta that had to, where you can dine in in Buckhead. It was called the Buckhead Backlot. And so you can eat there, it was the first of its kind, but 
doing that. And I was just watching movies 24 seven. You'll probably watch cause you'll work, the waiter will work a theater and you would have to work it while they played it. So that may be three times. So I probably seen a movie three times that day, me <laughs> taking tables. Like, it's not like you waiting tables, you're waiting the movie theater. So I'm taking orders of two, four, six, like a row, but it was tables and shit like that. So I was running that and that just filled my mind up. So I needed like a release. And so that's when, like how you said, well, how I came to always uptown, like Sundays, right? the celebrity or tipping on Tuesdays at the first ones, like, and just, seeing the come up and seeing guys like Ronnie or K-Dub, like just, and I actually tried it once. Like I tried it twice. Yeah, at First, Uptown? At Uptown on the Celebrity Sunday. Like- At the old Uptown? The one on, not the old old one, but Peachtree. The one on what, Peachtree. By Houston's, we, what, we was in a little corner. Yeah, that's the that's old, old one. I started, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Trey Black, he was like- Trey went, Black. He went before me, like, and Trey it was like went, doing the auditions. And so I tried it, but yeah. I, that's one thing, like I always want to just try shit. Like probably could sit there and master it, but I want to say I did it. Like I always was switching lanes, like just yeah. always trying doing something different. Cause I was just at the movie. So I, that was my release, like coming in and laughing, like, and just niggas was killing it. Like, and it's, it's dope to see everybody where they at right now. Cause it's like, I've seen the ones that didn't make it or, or didn't or did, and, and, but everybody's success is different. So because you're not on the BT, don't mean you're not winning or because you don't have to look at they that don't mean like, everybody's win is not my win. Yeah. So I just like seeing progression or seeing shit grow and get better. And that's where the comedy shit come. Cause I seen like your career, like from the beginning and he never let nobody down. Like yeah. me personally, like he never let me down. Like, and that's the one thing, like it's like boxing. Like I've been somewhere and seen comedians just have an off night, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, but they still did their shit mm -hmm. and they kept going. And then I seen where they at now and that's really, it's all about showing love. Like that's really like my, my motto, just really appreciating shit like that. Yeah, man. Giving people their flowers, you know we what I'm saying? We appreciate you as comedians <laughs> too, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause you it's like underrated. social media before it was social media. You like, yeah. this is connected. This is, like, how, I was, this is what like, people even, searching for. Like the thing like with Instagram, like I had most uh -huh. of Smoke wore your shirt every day. Like I had these <laughs> like before social media. Like I was literally, cause I was always that dude with the disposable camera. So these yep. are all pictures of shirts I painted, but I have like four of these probably. So that's literally probably going like this. Free uh -huh. He got the A team with Charlie and CJ. Wow. That was Griff. birthday bash. They wore my stuff as probably the first oh, early man. birthday. That's like, and that was me once again, Nintendo. Like showing my love with that. Like I was just, Shirt. Like how you said, tall T era. Tall I was T. in that era. Yeah, those t shirts are. Right. That was a paint huge. cost extra because and, it was and, more and fabric. Yeah, and these are all shit that like, I had <laughs> painted. Some of them. So I've been always. So we used to be ridiculous. Taking, yeah, it was so stupid. <laughs> man. You, be so ridiculous. you got that new face uh, Ninja Turtle logo that you did. Tall T. Oh, yeah. I remember you never tall T? I did. Yo, I saw. You gotta be the only person in this room that never tall T. I so talk like to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. I sold the motherfuckers. You needed a white talk to you. Holler at me. Wow, that's hard. Got the motherfuckers. Like, so you can see, like, before Instagram, I was like, ain't nothing really changed. I'm just. Sorry for everybody listening on your phone. We got a lot going on right now. Yeah. We showing pictures for everybody that's listening, got. but y'all got to be here. Yeah. But look, check it out on YouTube. Commercial early, break over. Early, early Killer Mike. He got a slim Killer Mike in here, boy. Young yeah. Killer Mike. <laughs> oh, they're like, come on. <laughs> Who is this? Kamala Mike. She was Kamala. a model. <laughs> Paula Michelle. She used to do fashion shows too. DJ Drama. Block. They go block. That was at the Dirty Awards. I think right before the the shot at the altercation. The dirty award. Like that's one thing I, I want to say now. Like I, I was there. I was what there. altercation? Was it shot at low or T I do? Yeah, yeah. shot at low. Oh, wow. Man. I think I was there. Damn. What else we got? So you see, you had a couple more things in the, in the cassette. Magazine. He had some of my old stuff awesome. on, on Instagram got, one time. Is that bro. a fresh team? Live fresh living room. I got that. Got my, <laughs> live from the living room. I got my first comedy album. What? J Rock signed that. Did you like sign us. it? 
Yeah, so, yeah. it was opening for him. It was at the. It oh, was before shit. they closed down the uptown. Oh yeah, we was yeah, like on some of the last like, people in there. Cause you said it had your manager, your, your managers on it. Uh, yeah, let's go. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got J Rock to sign this. J Rock signed that right before the game. This is a hell of a freshman yeah, cover. Yeah. Let me t- let me read Come it off on. so everybody can see. <laughs> J Cole, Pill, who was dope, but he's not really around anymore. But Hus- Nipsey Hustle, Wiz Khalifa, OJ the Juice Man. Hold on. Oh, J Rock, Freddie Gibbs, Big Sean. Ooh. For Sean and Donis. But, nigga. What year was that? 2010? 2010, yeah. Hell of a list. Wow. Man. Now, this is when XL was picking them. Most they, they, they picked them on this one. That was the one. That, that was, was the LeBron, D Wade, Chris Bosch, Carmelo she draft. had currency on him, but other than that. He, was currency 2010? First, though? he was he like, was on one, he was like on. I think he came before because, you know, he was with Wayne earlier. Yeah, he was like 2008. Yeah. Because if Wiz is on there, he was. How, how far you go back to currency? You know, he was on both labels, cash money and no limit. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a recent currency fan. You know what I'm saying? Smoking. So, like, I, I fucked with him with, with he's done stuff with Wayne, but I didn't, like, go seek his stuff like yeah. I would now. So later. Yeah, I'm a static selected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you just they put that out. Uh, bling, 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 bling. <laughs> man, artifacts, bro. Dude, oh, man. And this then just memories. Like, that, that's what I plan to do with my um, center, too, is just have a section with each one. And, you know, I have an idea and a concept all ready to launch. So that's what I'm building up to. And even um, later this summer, I'm going to be part of a festival putting together like one of my own stages. So that's coming soon. But oh, cool. I want to be able to go to like different festivals and set up like where the actual fan can go, like show that's yeah. what that is. Cause it's rare. Like it's without the, without the, you know, that's what the cassette party is like having a, a, a good time without the cell phone, just having, just having a good time. Mm-hmm. And then once it's over, yeah, let's go to social media but let's have a good time and that's really what I want to provide like that feeling of nostalgia you know so what, what do you do in the daytime like how do you finance <laughs> this hunting operation because I it seems time consuming I'm like daytime is kids you know like just today I was with my daughter we went to Piedmont free swim three to five you know you swim three to five uh, uh, doing that it's like Nah, they're not yeah, ready. They're not ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's really the day, you know. It's the day. Mm-hmm. So Take this pays for this, you, you. This is how you pay for your life with this, what you're um, collecting. And well, I've had doing. you know different roles, like helping people with styling, because I also paint. So like with acrylic painting, painting canvas, selling. I'm art. just trying to get the younger. It's some so, younger people that do this, and they want to uh-huh. know, can you make money off of this? That's oh, definitely number one question. Definitely, yeah. You're just finding the, your audience. It's right. really that's what I've done is found my audience, mm-hmm. and my audience, ironically, has been more the artists, or more the team, more the 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 other side, and it's actually converging into the fan because on social media there is a lot of hate so when somebody does show love it's rare and that's where maybe I get the attention or you know the difference when I meet a person like that so like, are you do you sell I was about to say what this, about what, I, what I've done start lately, making offers like, cause I've, done, I've auctioned that I do have a site where I've done that and offered right. it so I do sell but it's more of a collection because I want to have a museum right you know I want to be able to cultivate this and build it and, and keep so how do you at it. this point how are you and I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut mm-hmm. you off how are you accumulating your collection like are you still seeking out old magazines or have you just kind of accumulated stuff over time at this stage now it's people that transitioning probably married or whatever and i can't i'm moving i know you'll take care of it just because and that's what's how social media has helped me do you have like east bays at your house like east bays you got a collection of east bays nigga you the goat (laughs) yeah that calendar that subscription east bays wow because just think about if you had a movie you wanted to do where you needed to really paint the picture of this sneakerhead looking at shoes in east bay on the toilet that's the one yeah, that's the one. That's where everybody looked at East Bay. At but I use that. Channel. I use East Bay to find color schemes. Like I said, I was making shirts, so I was looking at which color schemes look good and which ones look, you know, that was my color palette, like, or mm-hmm. what people are wearing now. So I look at East Bay and then in my head come up with a design. And also, like, with artists, too, I I'm help them look look away, you know what I'm saying? Be genuine, but this is how I think you should present it because the same ways that these people got on, while things have changed, it's real gotta be organic. Any person that's rich and, and, and doing things well, they had an organic fan base. And, it, and that's what I'm trying to 
accumulate with this, with my fan base, with people that are collecting, finding my core audience, see who rock with it, and moving from there. Because while it's not essential part of my income, it's income now. Right. You know, it, it wasn't before, and it was out of love. So it's it's giving that love back continuously. You know? But I would love to see you with like a series or something. Like they got the yeah. What's the, the I was just about to talk about that dude. But I get mad when I see him though. It pisses me off yeah. so bad because I'm like, nigga, I know you don't even know what song was out when that shirt came oh, out. Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, you, does that piss you off sometimes? When you see people. This nigga got something else. Finals. <laughs> wow, we met How her. How famous is that cover? Darlene. Oh, yeah. We kicked it with her all summer. She, she's on Corey Darlene. Hogan's podcast, oh, Darlene. Yeah, yeah 5150. Yeah. Damn, Darlene. Darlene, boy. <laughs> That's Corey Hogan right there. Hey, Issa. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Two bodies. Look, no one knows who did it. Faring at them. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is actually recent. Too. Young Blood. That's Snoop and Snoop. Oh, no. Signed like, by both of them. Yeah. Young this Blood. Because they had their 20 year anniversary show at like the stage. Though. Look at yes. that, man. It's yeah. not shit. Shake them off. We're all right, everybody that's listening at home. It's just nigga talk outside. Sorry. Mm. This sounds like a whole dice game outside. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Damn, Damn man. This is amazing. So I think we need to do a new face event, man. I don't know. I feel like... Uh, we I'm with it. I'm, I'm with, 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 with whoever supports the call. Like uh, it's about finding my my audience and finding the the love and, and and being mutual. It's really about taking care. Like not take how you said appropriating it. Because yeah. I've not done that. I've never sold sold something out or it's what happened. Because I've been in a situation where I still got the autograph and it was like some wild shit going on in the back. Like wow. and they know me that I don't. Because I don't. That's a good thing with my relationship is I'm like they can be themselves. I'm not, I'm not the, that dude. So they get able to be themselves and don't have to worry about it. And I know I'm just showing love mm-hmm. and, and, and that's it. Damn. Now I got to make a moment. Anytime somebody walk over to me with some old shit of mine, I'm doing, if I had an album, I would do some cocaine off of it. Just, just to, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I signed it, brother. Hold it first. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> oh man. Yo, don't this, you this never stop believing. Don't stop dreaming. That's funny. <laughs> Well, tell everybody where they can find you at, bro. Unless you got, did, 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 is that a, I feel like that was a Can we have a mini record. museum at the next AF event? Can we have a, yeah. a mini museum? Hey, but, 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 before we go, man, you said you kept your kids' teeth. Like, you got all your kids' teeth? I probably got the first three of each one. About like, say. even starting out with my um, daughter, like, I have, I, I, I thought wanted you meant, to uh, take I believe you when you said, because you, when he said I kept the teeth, I thought he had four sets of 32. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. All the teeth. He got 100,000 teeth in his house. <laughs> Daddy, I dropped your teeth jar. <laughs> Fuck everything up. Yeah. <laughs> so tell everybody you, where they can find you and um, you know what else. You On can Instagram, do. it's uh at New Face N U F A C E. And if you're interested in supporting the shop, um, it's New. Um, cult, new Hip Hop X Culture Center, and that's on Instagram as well. And that's just basically just the the merchandise and things like that that that'll be in the museum coming soon. A tease or like I offer questionnaires and giveaways on that on that page just to see once again finding my audience and having those those back and forth. And, and that's where you can find me at New Face on that Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. There it is. It's Greg. Um, so yeah, man. I guess it's that time. On life. On, on, that's on life, on, mama. On me, mama. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's on life. So yeah, man, we like to uh end the show with a segment we call Secret Genius Life Coach. Where I get the people some words of wisdom to get through the week. Get to the next episode. I am Kamal the Secret Genius and the words of the week are this. The cheat code runs out, man. Mm. So you better learn how to play the game. God. Mm. And a collection plate. And a collection plate. Whatever, whatever <laughs> tricks that you've learned to advance, you know, whatever workarounds you figured out, whatever shortcuts you've managed to come across, that shit is all fine and dandy in the beginning, but it, it comes a point when it doesn't matter. It doesn't work anymore. And that cheat code runs out. You can't put it in anymore. 
Mm-hmm. And all you got is the regular controls, and you got to play the game. So learn how to play the game with the rules. So that once that cheat code is up, once that shortcut is over, and you got to get back to the regular road, that you can still navigate. Because the cheat code runs out, man. That's all I got. Man, where were you when I was in eighth grade? <laughs> Shit. Code it turned out, out much different. Man. Hear me? You can't put the cheat code back in. You can't do that's 15 song jokes. <laughs> 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 Nigga, that's funny. I was just uh, like this. <laughs> Five times, nigga. Yeah, more than coaches to brand, this is the podcast. It's an aggressive fly that's been in here the whole time. Bruh, she's been, been killing you. wanted to touch like, your body, like, what bro. you gonna do? The fly like, I was like, like nigga. nigga. I've never seen a fly touch everyone. <laughs> I know, I brought him with me. That's, that's the first <laughs> one. When I came to Atlanta, <laughs> like, he, <laughs> That's uh, the strongest you got this vintage fly. Yeah, well, you can feel it land. Like, what the mm. fuck have you been doing? <laughs> that fly dropped his phone on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, get your phone, my money. This child fly. Oh, man. Uh, more than coaches, the brand is the podcast. Kamal, the secret genius. Remo Rod, Tyler Chronicles, Ronnie Jordan. Special guest, New Face. We out. Appreciate you, bro. Man. man. So, you oh, a good consultant. Yeah. You remember the Who's the Man? Remember that movie, Who's the Man? Yeah. Um, with...